so guys i am a verified educator on an online learning platform called on academy right where i am making courses for gate examination both in hindi and english right so you can download the on academy learning app search my name over there act and follow me on that particular platform for awesome videos on the gate chemistry examination right hey guys a very good evening to all of you now uh, i haven't uploaded any video for the past one month the last video i uploaded was on 19th of september and i'd gone you know kind of off track for a while but i am hopefully now back on track and i couldn't find a better day to start uploading videos than just after the shara right so first of all wish you all a very happy the shara and now i'm going to talk about a very important topic uh, which might be very useful for the csi net exam and it was last this question was last asked in december 2016 that is about satellite peaks so what exactly is the satellite peaks i am not just going to help you solve that particular question but i'm just going to help you uh, understand the concept right so once you understand the concept then any kind of question that is uh, put upon you uh, you can easily solve right so what about what are satellite peaks so when when we are talking about anima so till now we have what we have studied about anima is highly uh, either very high abundance almost 100% abundance like pro like protons like hydrogen like fluorine we have talked about 19f nmr or proton nmr or we have talked about extremely low abundances like carbon nmr right where the abundance is very very low right so uh, now what about the mid range of uh, mid range abundances like for example certain isotopes have only 14% uh, let's say one of the isotopes has 14% active nuclei whereas rest 86% are inactive so what about those cases in what what happens in those cases right right so to take a simple example i'll take wf6 right it's a tungsten compound wf6 so in wf6 what happens is uh tungsten uh, 183 okay 183 tungsten is 14% in abundance right so there are different isotopes of tungsten but 183 tungsten which is nmr active it has a spin of half okay so 183 tungsten it has nmr active and it has a spin of half okay it has a spin of half but it is only 14% abundant rest 86% abundance of tungsten the rest of the isotopes are 86% in abundance and they are not nmr active okay they are nmr inactive so this 14% is only nmr active now what happens is if i talk about the wf6 nmr and if i particularly talk about the tungsten nmr so if we use the basic formula 2ni plus 1 right 2ni plus 1 so if you use this basic formula 2 into uh, n is basically number of fluorine atoms because the fluorine is nmr active and these fluorines are going to couple with tungsten so there are six fluorines so 2 into 6 into half plus 1 right so this becomes uh, 12 uh, 7 this becomes 7 so we will uh, we'll see a septet septet so there will be seven lines observed in the tungsten nmr 183 tungsten nmr there will be 17 uh, there will be seven lines observed right and what will be the ratio we will follow the some normal pascalian triangle rule so the ratio will be um, i think i'm not sure 1 is to um 6 is to 15 is to 20 is to 15 is to 6 is to 1 i'm not sure but something like this in a septet i think this is the ratio i am not sure whether it's correct or not but you get the point we will follow the pascalian triangle rule because spin is half if spin is greater than half then we follow the non pascalian triangle rule right so this is the uh, in, this is the ratio right but what about if i take the fluorine nmr so over here if i take the 19f nmr this is where the concept of satellite peaks comes into the picture so if i take the 19f nmr uh, what will happen in that case is that uh, since 86% of the tungsten is inactive okay so let's say uh, for, for to understand this concept let's say tungsten is not like uh, tungsten is not there we are just taking the 19f nmr if simply we are taking the 19f nmr and there are fluorine present what do you, what will you see in the nmr you, if i talk if this is the nmr what will you see you will just see a singlet that will tell you that okay fluorine is there right it will tell you that fluorine is there in the compound okay but now tungsten is there but 86% of the tungsten is not interacting with this fluorine because that 83% of the 80 um, 86% of that tungsten is nmr inactive so that 86% of the tungsten isotopes are not going to interact with the fluorine so this line will remain undisturbed but the 14% of 183 tungsten which is nmr active which has a spin of half is going to interact with this fluorine okay so if i use the simple rule 2ni plus 1 
if I use this simple rule 2 and I plus 1, now we have one tungsten, right? We have one tungsten. So 2 into 1 into half into half plus 1. So basically it will split it into two lines. It will split the fluorine into two lines. But 183 tungsten is only 14% in abundance. It's only 14% in abundance. So the rest 86% of the tungsten is not going to interact with the fluorine. Only this 14, uh, only this 14% of the tungsten is going to interact with this fluorine. So with the singlet, what you're going to observe are two doublets. What you're going to observe are two doublets like this. So in in, in one sense, you will see a triplet in the NMR spectrum. You'll see one singlet and that singlet arises because of the 86% of the uh, 86% of the tungsten which are not interacting with the fluorine and these two arise because of the 7-7% interaction. Total 14% and since it's splitting into a doublet, 7% so on one side, 7% on the other side. So these two are called the satellite peaks. Because the abundance of the active tungsten is very very low, that's why you are seeing 7-7% uh, as a doublet. So total NMR is going to be a single, uh, is going to be a triplet with this ratio. 7 is to 86 is to 7. And that depends on the abundance of that particular isotope. Right? So from this, I hope you got the concept of um, satellite peak. Alright? So if I talk about a question, um, the question was like this. It was asked in, I think, December 2016 for two marks. Alright? So surprisingly, it was asked for two marks. I thought it's a good concept and should be asked for four marks. Uh, but anyway, we won't discuss the marking scheme over here. Uh, the question was that um, XCF5 was given to us and it was given that one of the isotopes of xenon, um, uh, like um, 129 xenon, 129 xenon has an abundance of 126%, sorry, 26% has an abundance of 26% and the I value for that is equal to half. So this was given to us and was asked that in the 19F NMR, how many number of peaks would you see, right? So first of all, if we talk about the structure of XEF5 minus, so in XEF5 minus, we have, if, if according to Vesper theory you go, uh, we have five bond pairs and uh, two lone pairs, okay? So the structure will be something like this, like the two lone pairs will be above and below the plane, right? And then we'll have five fluorines, which will be in the plane. So we'll have five fluorines which are equidistant from one another like I can't draw the proper diagram I'm really bad at it but these five fluorines are in the plane and they're equidistant from one another so basically all the five fluid fluorines are equivalent so if I talk about the 19F NMR the same thing uh, you can apply over here also right if so if you want you can just pause the video and try to find out the answer and tell me the abundance also like the percentage also the ratio of the peaks right so if i talk if i plot the nmr spectra uh, so what will i observe first of all like for fluorines i'll observe a singlet single line right uh, which will be a singlet but 26 percent of the xenon uh, this particular isotope is nmr active and the abundance is 26 percent so this 26 percent xenon rest 74 percent is not going to interact with the fluorine for which you'll see a singlet uh, which for which i'll write 74 over here but for the rest of the, uh, uh, but this xenon will split it, split the fluorines into doublet, right? Again, the same rule, 2 Ni plus 1 if you apply. This xenon, uh, these 26 percent xenon, which are NMR active and have a spin of half, will split this xenon into doublet, uh, will split the fluorine into doublet in the 19F NMR because they are going to couple with the fluorines. So now you'll see two doublets as well around this, which are the satellite peaks and the ratio will be 13 because to total 26 percent so 13 13 so the ratio overall ratio you'll see a triplet first of all so that answers your question you'll see a triplet but if i talk about the ratio it will be 13 is to 74 is to 13 all right so this will be the ratio right now i'll take a one complex example and i want to tell you uh, i want you guys to tell me the ratio as well right it's a very good example and i hope the csi or gate uh, gate people ask you this particular question and the question is uh, what about germanium h4 germanium h4 what about this compound so in germanium um, i'm not sure uh, the abundance i'm quite sure uh, abundance is around eight percent for the N for the nmr active uh, isotope of germanium uh, it's eight percent okay and the spin value is nine by two the spin value for germanium is nine by two so if i talk, if i talk about the proton nmr uh, for germanium uh, for, for sorry for proton nmr for uh, for this particular compound then 
eight percent of the germanium which is nmr active is going to interact with this hydrogen so first of all if i plot the nmr you'll see a singlet uh, for uh, the intensity will be 92 okay but uh, what what else will you see because of this germanium which has a spin of 9 by 2 it will split it into what it will split it into a uh, 10 lines right if i if i simply use this formula 2 ni plus 1 um, and 2 into 9 by 2 right uh, sorry 2 into 1 into 9 by 2 plus 1 so it this will give us 10 lines so apart from this one line i am going to see 10 other lines all right so apart from this one line i'm going to see 10 other lines so total i'm going to see 11 lines so like 1 2 3 4 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 and you can imagine the percentage because this are, this is a, this is 92 percent so these 10 lines will be split into uh these uh, sorry these 10 lines will be split into 0.8 right because total 8 percent so 0 0.8 0 0.8 0.8 so you can see they will be very very marginal if there is a, if there is more noise in the nmr spectra you might not be able to see these lines as well so, so that's why these are called satellite peaks they are very very small peaks that you see in the nmr spectrum so in germanium h4 if you actually see the nmr i've actually seen the live nmr for germanium h4 and you'll observe these small lines as well so you'll see 10 lines uh, followed by one very intense single line so this single line is because of the 92 percent germanium atoms which are not interacting with the fluorine and the rest of these 10 lines are because of the 8 percent abundance of the nmr active germanium right so this is all about your uh, inorganic uh, spectroscopy like the satellite peaks and um, there are many more concepts that you have to learn in inorganic spectroscopy because i can uh, like i have an intuition that this time there will be some questions from inorganic spectroscopy because they were asked around 2014 2015 uh, but since then not many questions have been asked from inorganic spectroscopy so especially especially your fluxional behavior how does the fluxional behavior affect the nmr then uh, you know metal hydride bonds how can they be de detected by nmr because they have a totally different uh, outlook towards nmr spectroscopy like metal hydride bonds uh, they are generally in the minus region so generally if you talk about organic spectroscopy you see in the range of 1 to 15 but if you talk about inorganic spectroscopy especially the metal hydride bonds you see it in the range of 0 to minus 50 or minus 60 also right so it goes in the negative so in the next video we are going to talk about the uh, inorganic spectroscopy like how to use nmr spectroscopy in order to uh, characterize inorganic compounds right so i hope you found this video useful if you did please give it a big like and also do not forget to share and uh, share share this video and subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video